pertains to home field advantage in a potential one-game wildcard showdown. The Bucks have lost two of the first three games of this four-game set with the Cubs, but if they can win today, they'll send the Cubbies out of town no closer to them than when they arrived in Pittsburgh, but four important games closer to the end of the season. It's the Bucks and Cubs, and it begins right now on Route 4. afternoon on the North Shore for a baseball game and the Pirates fans hoping to raise it when this matinee is over as the Pirates take on the Chicago Cubs in the fourth game of this four game set Central Division standings the Cardinals four up on the Bucks seven back are the Cubs they're three behind the Pirates to start action today. Hi again, everybody, along with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Never, Dan Potash with us as well. September baseball is great. We're seeing it at its finest right now. A lot of close games in this series between the Cubs and the Pirates, and another one last night that took 12 innings to decide. Yeah, it's a, it's a great month for baseball, meaningful baseball. The Cubs and the Pirates have really been intense. It's been exciting. Uh, both of these teams, however, are going to have to play better fundamental baseball. Seven errors committed by these teams in the first three games. But it's, it's, it all comes into focus, Tim. We're, we're looking down the rotations. We're looking at the matchups. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a great month weather-wise, perfect weather for baseball, meaningful baseball. And uh, it's going to be a big finish, really big finish. Let's look at today's pitching matchup. For the Cubs, it's Kyle Hendricks. And for the Pirates, right-hander Charlie Morton. Yeah, Charlie's been very, very good here at home. He's been very, very good in the month of September. He's going to need both his pitches. This is a, a very hard-hitting Chicago Cubs lineup. They hit a lot of home runs. He wants to keep the ball down, but he's got to have both pitches. You don't want to be one-dimensional against this Cubs lineup. They are that tough. Kyle Hendricks has uh, done a good job since coming up through the minor league system for the Cubs. He has not been dazzling against the Pittsburgh Pirates, but uh, he is uh, a guy that can shut you down. He's capable. He's got great changeup. He's got great control. So the Pirates are going to have to be very, very aggressive, I think, in the in the uh, approach against Kyle Hendricks. Buccos need a win this afternoon. Charlie Morton, Kyle Hendricks, the pitching matchup as the Pirates look for a series split. It's the Bucks and the Cubs. Lineups and first pitch coming up on Root Sports.
Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. And by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Let's go Bucks. Charlie Morton heading out to the hill. He has done pretty well in his last uh, 10 starts here at PNC Park. Six and two here at home. Trying to come up with win number 10 on the season. Lots of youngsters enjoying this day as they get to go out and get an autograph. A little pat on the back for Starling Marte there. Maybe for that throw he made last night. <laughs> but it should be. A great look behind Charlie Morton as he gets set to start his warm up tosses. You know, you, you try not to get into the trap, Steve, of saying, oh, you know, must win games because every game you're trying to win. But as you get further in the season, down into a pennant race, each game gets magnified more and more. Everything comes into focus, and you really want to send a little message to the Chicago Cubs that, hey, we are here, we're, uh, we're around, we're not going anywhere. Well, Charlie will be pitching to this lineup written up by Joe Madden today. Dexter Fowler leads off. Kyle Schwarber bats second. Chris Coughlin and Anthony Rizzo in the fifth spot. Chris Bryant he had a three-hit game last night. Single and two doubles. Miguel Montero and Addison Russell back out at shortstop. The pitcher bats eighth again today. Second time in the series they've had the pitcher hitting eighth. Tommy Lestello bat ninth and plays second base. Dexter Fowler switch hitting center fielder on the right Kyle Schwarber left fielder on the left and the numbers on Charlie Morton brought to you by Hyundai. Yep. Starting number 21 for Charlie three and five lifetime against the Chicago Cubs and 13 starts last two starts for Charlie. Very good. Last time out against Milwaukee pitched well to start before that against St. Louis pitched well enough to win. So uh, he's got a little bit of a role going on. We talked about the power in the Cubs lineup also got to be aware of the, the Running game because uh, they ran wild last night. So, um, so he's got a lot of things to pay attention to. Defensively, behind Morton this afternoon, Marte entering the outfield in center field today. Adam McCutcheon has the day off. Travis Snyder in left, Gregory Polanco in right, Harrison Gunn, Walker, and Alvarez left to right around the infield with Francisco Cervelli completing the battery. Cervelli back behind the plate started last night's game. With the uh, style of shades on underneath the mask for Cervelli. Well, they'll start the ball game in a shift with Harrison on the right side of the infield. And the first ball is dropped into right field by Dexter Fowler. The very first pitch of the game hit to right, and the Cubs have a man aboard. So we are underway with this kind of start is not a bad location for the delivery from Charlie pretty good piece of hitting by Dexter Fowler. And uh, Charlie going to be looking for those ground balls. AJ Burnett last night five and a third tough innings was two earned runs given up seven strikeouts. He was working hard last night. To pitch out of the stretch for the majority of his outing, but just well through some situations. Schwarber takes a strike. Cubs left a lot of guys on last night. Well, because uh, because a lot of the pirate pitchers got out of a lot of jams by getting huge outs. That ball could have, or that ball game could have gotten away very very quickly against AJ and the rest of the pirate pitchers. Schwarber lines it past Walker into right field. That's. Back to back singles. Just a bullet off the bat of Schwarber. And now two on, nobody out for the Cubs. Too hot to handle. That ball is tattooed. So, first two batters in the Cubs lineup, solid, very solid contact. Usually to say too hot to handle at first base or third base because you're so close. That ball is so hard hit. Even Walker playing back a little bit. It's a, just a shot that got by him. Chris Coglin facing Charlie. Charlie delivers a strike to him. 
Charlie needs a break here. He's a double play ball or something. Top of the first, two on, nobody up. That's been a problem for the Pirates in recent games. First inning runs by the opponents. Not last night, but I think the previous three games in a row, the opponents scored in the first and something like five out of six before last night. You hate to get down early. Just, just hate to get down early. Simple as that. Charlie trying out the curveball. One and one good sinking fastball for the strike. Curveball missing downstairs. You mentioned three of the last four games, aside from last night. Four of the last five, the opposition has scored at least one run in the first. One ball, one strike to Coglin. There's a ground ball to Walker. Second for one, he dropped it. And Schwarber slid in awkwardly. A bad throw by Walker, a little low and tough for Jung Ho to handle on what could have been a room service double play ball. Could have been. Now, Coughlin has pretty good speed, but you're, you're going to get at least one. Well, that would be an error on Jung Ho. That was playable. Flat, flat dropped it. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about in the open. Uh, you you got to you got to make plays uh, all year long, certainly. But it's really, really emphasized uh, in the month of September when you're in contention. You, got, you got, simply got to make those plays. Fielder's choice in an E6. Schwarber trying to run it off out in the outfield to see if he's okay. Looks like he's fine. Cubs have loaded the bases with nobody out. Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, Charlie Morton versus the long ball. We talked about the Cubs. Uh, they're ranked fourth in the National League in home runs. And against the stolen base, they're ranked fifth. They have 62 stolen bases in the top five batters in their lineup. 62 steals. And they stole five last night. So another thing uh, to be aware of during the course of the afternoon. And this is not a great start. Not a great start at all. Bases loaded and Rizzo at the plate. And you're talking about maybe at best here. Trading two outs for a run. Oh, I'd, I'd love that. I think the Pirates would make that deal. Take it at this second. point. Oh. One 0 pitch. And Rizzo grounds a foul past first base. And that could have created a merry-go-round if that ball. Stays fair. Great look at it as it uh, starts out in fair territory. But, uh, fortunately, it hooks on the other side of the chalk. Sinker ball low. And you see Charlie throwing the ball low in the strike zone. It needs to stay there. There's a ground ball to second. And the throw to first got him. Jung Ho is hurt. Play is still alive, but a takeout slide by Coglin. He went after Jung Ho, and Jung Ho got rolled over. Looks like the left knee. They get the double play at a real cost. Both trainers. Well, Ben Potenziano and, and the translator HK Kim are out to attend the Jung Ho Gun. Now watch Coglin going after him. Oh, oh, you, yeah. You can see what happens there. It's not pretty to look at. The leg doesn't bend that way. It doesn't give that way. Two, two hard slides in yeah. the second base. And Schwarber tried that to play before, and he ended up sliding awkwardly. But yeah, boy, he went right after his shin. You got to play. You got to slide aggressively. I understand that. I don't think that's a dirty play. I, I, you just you try to break up break up double plays. You don't like it when anybody gets hurt, especially one of your guys. But at the same point, it's a game that. 
requires aggression on the base paths from time to time. In the meantime, Jung Ho Gun laid out at second, and certainly not a welcome sight to see as a Pirate shortstop seems to be in some heavy discomfort yeah, right that, now. That, that was that that knee. Something has to give when you when you hit like that. Pirates lost Jordy Mercer to a similar play. Jordy was off the base a little bit toward first against the Brewers. And Carlos Gomez at the time took him out, lost Jordy for a while, and now Jung Ho being helped off the field. Boy, we hope he's all right. Chris Coglin with a takeout slide. Here comes Mercer. He's going to go in and play short. As they get them in where they can get a good look and assess the damage. And Jordy will take over. John Hall will get attended to and we'll get some word on him as soon as it becomes available. Chris Coglin with a takeout slide. Took Jung Ho out. Top of the first inning. Fowler scores on the play, by the way. So they get the double play, one run in. Jung Ho favoring that left leg. Yeah, now no way on it. Coglin going to the outside right after. The throw from second took a little longer to get there because Walker had to go to his left. Mercer takes over in the top of the first inning. Two outs. Schwarber the runner at third, and the batter is Chris Bryant. Pitch outside. Ball one. See the infielder get out of the way. They take the crow hop, but Jung Ho just didn't have time. Now it's two and zero. Oh. What's it like, Steve, in the dugout when something like that happens to a teammate? Let's say there. Well, you're obviously disappointed. You never like the the look of it, and. and People, some people react uh, with a thought of intent that he was trying to hurt him, he's trying to break up a double play. But uh, he's, he's your guy, like you say, and uh, uh, you don't like it. But uh, you, know, you're, you play hard too. You try to break up double plays. John Hall gun, very, very important part of this baseball team. Two seventy, the average for Bryant. Three hits last night. All three off AJ Burnett. And Schwarber at third, two down. Two ball, two strike pitch from Charlie. Ball ball. And, and this this would be big to escape uh, this uh, uh, very difficult top of the first inning uh, with the cost of not only Jung Ho Gung but one run. If, if you leave them there, this, it, it sounds funny. You've given up a run. It's not been pretty, but you have gotten out a major mess. Now, if, if you don't get him in the second run score, it just, just doesn't have the same good feel. Still just two, but this could be huge to leave him at third base right now. Full count pitch. Schwarber at third base. Had a shot at him at third, too, by the way, on that play. 
This ball is gapped to right center, but after it, Polanco. He make the catch. A one run comes in. Two hits and a man left. One nothing comes after half a Chris Conlin out in right field. Take out slide, knocking Jung Ho Gung out of the ball game. Kyle Schwarber went around third, Steve. The Pirates actually had a shot at him. Pedro elected not to throw as Schwarber went halfway down the baseline. See, there he goes, thinking he might be able to sneak into home. And uh, not, not guaranteed that you're going to get it, but it might have been worth a throw from Pedro as he gets the throw on the double play and then takes a look and decides. That uh, he's not going to throw it over there. Uh, Pirates lineup brought to you by Toyota. Polanco leads off, and Marte, Walker, Jordy Mercer will now back cleanup. Pedro Alvarez fifth, Francisco Cervelli, Travis Snyder next in left field. Josh Harrison hits eighth, playing third. Charlie Morton ninth. The Cubs. Right hander Kyle Hendricks takes the hill now for the first time this afternoon. Yep, 25 year old right hander, 6'3, 190, out of Newport Beach, California. Originally with the Texas Rangers, but the Cubs got him in the middle of the 2012 season. Started out in their minor leagues in a steady progression up to the big leagues. He has had one win in his last six starts. That was last time out against the Phils. To Polanco is in for a strike. We've told you about his reputation of throwing a lot of strikes. Very good control, very good off speed pitch. Has gotten his share of strikeouts, even though the change is one of the primaries. Two fifty six for Gregory, eight home runs. He drove in a run last night, drove in the tying run in the eighth inning. Also singled and scored. The other pirate run. He goes down looking. Well, Hendricks starts the game with a strikeout. A little bit up in the zone, but picking up that inside corner. Bradley didn't think so, but Greg Gibson, home plate umpire, did. Polanco for one. Marte at the plate right now, facing Hendricks. Uh, 16 in the third innings against the Pirates this year. Hendricks has given up 10 runs. The Pirates have gotten to him in the past. He's 0-1 against the Pirates in three starts. 563 earned run average. Looks like he should have some opportunities then. Marte taking that pitch. One wall, one strike. And uh, what you have with these control pitchers that uh, if you wait around a pitch or two or three, you got a chance to be behind in the count on two so you see something you like early go get it a strike in there by Hendricks he's going to fill up the zone that's his mo that's how he operates 
one two to Starling Martinez swung on and hit it is short Madison Russell throws him out two down. Russell originally a second baseman with Castro short and they uh, switched. Jung Ho crossed out before he could even get to the plate. Mercer in. And Walker hitting third. Jordy out in the on deck circle. Got McCutcheon and Gung out of the lineup. Walker fouls it back. Neal takes a whack at the first pitch. You know, Jordy had the same issue earlier in the season against the Brewers that Jung Ho's experiencing right now. Gotta wonder if that brings it back to his mind. Already had to miss some time. Base hit for Walker. He strokes a single with two out. Time runners aboard in the bottom of the first. I'm sure Jordy Mercer didn't roll out of bed this morning figuring he'd be batting cleanup. But maybe. He he can have one of those days where he can hit like a cleanup guy. Yeah. But who was it? Harrison that got inserted in the lineup uh, for more at the last minute and had four hits. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. Maybe we'll take that pitch for strike one. He's a, a 500 hitter in his career as a cleanup guy, Steve. Two for four. <laughs> I knew that was coming. With a double. Behind in the count, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, sometimes you're just sitting there on the bench, and all of a sudden something happens like that, and tag, you're it. Get out there. Well, that's why you do as much preparation pregame as you can because that might happen. You never know. When you're get you want to be ready, you don't want to be completely cold. So prepare like you're playing. You heard that. All last year from Josh Harrison. We started playing on a regular basis. I prepare like I'm going to play. Hendricks delivering one two. And Jordy's got himself a base hit. Past the diving second baseman Listella. Listella gave it an effort. Yeah, had to hold up. He almost got to it. And two on and two on. Breaking ball. Off the outside corner, but he goes out and gets it and puts it back through the middle. Sometimes the swing doesn't look all that great, and you get that kind of result. And Jordy now is a 600 hitter as a cleanup guy. Mm -hmm. And now okay. Pedro Alvarez, uh, by the way, 14 home runs given up by Hendricks. So wouldn't that be a nice way to answer the top of the first? Plus it's daytime. That's a good combination. And Pedro Alvarez is at the plate. Ball one to Pedro. Not that that's an indication, but with that kind of power up there, Hendricks, a control pitcher, misses significantly on that first delivery. You just wonder if anything's in the back of his mind. This is his first full year in the big leagues for Kyle Hendricks. Trying to stay away from that power. And succeeding. With the cross of a 2 0 count. Two on, two out. Three and all. Last night, Pedro came in to pinch hit in the eighth inning and was walked to load the bases. Pirates ultimately got the tying run that inning. And he's had a couple of significant free passes, good at bats, recent games. 3 0 right there. Pedro still in a good count. Leading the club with 23 home runs. Up the count at three and two. 86 mile an hour delivery from Hendricks. 
could start the merry-go-round. Last uh, four games, Steve, Pedro's gone two for six with seven walks. You take what they're giving you. Three, two. Strike three call. Pedro not very pleased. One nothing Cubs after one. State Farm game break last night. The Giants wrapped up the three-game series with the Reds. Jake Peavy came through offensively as well as on the mound. Peavy homered off Colin Ballester in the fourth, his first in nine years, and he struck out eight in six innings of work to pick up his seventh win of the season. As San Fran took the rubber match five to three. Let's head back to Tim and Steve at PNC Park, guys. Thank you very much, Rob. And the magic number now to clinch at least a playoff spot is. Seven. So any combination of Pirates wins and Giants losses equaling seven will clinch at least that second wild card spot. Will guarantee the Pirates a postseason bid. That's the magic number to get to at least the postseason. Bucks still focused on the division. Four games back of the Cardinals with 16 to play after this one today. Miguel Montero, first ball swinging. Base hit to right. Well, what we've seen so far, Steve, is Cubs hitters going up there trying to ambush Charlie Morton. Well, they've uh, been successful. Charlie wiggled out uh, of the first inning with minimal damage, but you don't want to make a lifestyle of having that leadoff man get on base. Addison Russell batting seventh. 39 for him did not play last night. Now the way the schedule is going, we don't have a game tonight, right? Correct. Boy, this week has been. Yeah, it's uh, it's been wild. Russell fouls it off, one ball and one strike. Pirates after this affair this afternoon going out to. LA and looking right down the barrel at a couple of pretty decent uh, pitchers. Saw Arietta last night. We're going to see Mr. Grinke and Mr. Kershaw. In uh, three out of four games, the Pirates will have faced pitchers with sub two ERAs or about two. Ground ball. That's past the diving third baseman Harrison into the left field corner. And then Montero's going to get waved home. And the Cubs. They played another run. It's two nothing. Down into the corner and then a little trouble for Travis Snyder picking that ball up. You see, the race is on after it gets by Josh Harrison. 
doesn't hit off the stands there, but it's down in the corner. And then Travis over and finding the handle, getting it back in, and it might have created the difference at home plate. I see third base coach watching that ball get away from Travis and putting the windmill up all the way around from first base. And that's a catcher running. And they need to cool him down and give him some oxygen. Yeah, he's coming toward third base, and Gary Jones says, "Come on!" And he says, "Really, really? You want you want me to keep going?" Hendricks trying to bunt fouls it off. Down two nothing early. Double number 26 for Russell is 48th run batted in. And Montero got a bionic knee apparently. Running with a knee brace and scoring all the way from first base. Pirates really cannot afford to get too much further behind in this game. They, they lose three out of four at home to the Cubs. Then the difference would be just two games. And it's early to talk about it. We're just in the second inning, but it is a possibility. Sir Dunley throws that one off the glove of Mercer, and Russell frozen at second base. Didn't see the ball get out there. I don't think he's going to go anywhere, but the way things are going, uh, just uh, continues to be choppy work for the Pirates, fundamentally. Russell finds it too late to go anywhere. One two the count to Kyle Hendricks. Puts it down foul and strikes out. One down for the Cubs in the second inning. Point Park University tweet. Should MLB take measures to protect second baseman and shortstops from takeout slides? Sure, why not? They have the Posey rule. Why don't they change everything? I mean, would you? I don't know what the numbers are, Steve, but it seems like more guys get hurt at second than they do at the plate. Uh, you know, uh, how many parts of basic baseball are they going to take away? Last night's play at the plate caused uh, a lot of controversy, a lot of conversation. Montero involved into that the plate Baez the shortstop who was not playing in Pedro Flormon had no place to go at third base and in Major League Baseball's reasoning for confirming the call of out this one's into the corner La Stella rumbling around first another runs going to come in it's three nothing Chicago two doubles in the inning three hits total and Charlie's getting hit early. And these aren't boobs. Went deep, deep, deep into the pirate bullpen last night. Clint Hurdle would like to get innings from Charlie, but uh, if you don't want this game to get away, you can't wait much longer before you at least start to get somebody to loosen up. Comes up three nothing early. All right, Surridge will go out and visit with Charlie as La Stella has his second hit in as many games. Had a base hit in the 11th inning last night. Tried to stretch it for two as he hit it down in the left field corner. But Starling Marte fired a bullet to second base and got La Stella by a lot. And uh, to add to the problems, La Stella not stopping at first base into second, so the double play not in order. As the Pirates look for a second out here in the second inning. One is flared by Fowler. Five Cub hits as we play in the second inning. Well, one to Fowler. One ball and one strike. With a base hit and a run scored in the first. 
Runner at second base, one out. Charlie's 1 1 pitch. In for a strike called 1 and 2. Curveball and play there. Charlie needs to get it together. Fouled off again. One and two now. Fowler. Charlie tries to get him out. Two runs in on three hits, a pair of doubles. Comes of extra base hits in 50 straight games now. And a short hop to Walker at second base. He gets the out, two gone. Allegheny Health Network injury update on John Hogan. First inning. Coblin takes him out on a double play ball. That knee bent in a scary way. He went down, was taken out immediately. And the word is a uh, left knee injury. That's all we've got right now. <laughs> I guess that's pretty evident. He is being treated and evaluated. If we can add more, but uh, that's all we've got. No specifics on it yet. You get hit right there. Either the, the knee has got to give, or the ankle's got to give. In this case, it was the knee. A one pitch. Schwarber pops it up. Josh Harrison underneath it. Two more runs come in for the Cubs on three hits, and they leave a man. After an inning and a half, three nothing Chicago. All on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Cruze and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. Still a little bit of summer left on the Allegheny River. Pirates hope to get the bats going now, the bottom of the second inning. Down 3 0. Kyle Hendricks in the Cups. Cervelli Great. takes a strike. An opportunity for the Pirates in the bottom of the first. I, I can't uh, imagine nothing against Kyle Hendricks, but the Pirates are going to score. And so this game is not over by any means. I, get, uh, I bet Miguel Montero is glad he's a catcher now and have, not having to run down any balls in the outfield after his trip. Francisco almost gets a free trip to first base. I don't know how much of the body he wanted to get out of the way there. Count evens up. It's Jamison's first Bucko game. He's here in full uniform. 
Jameson's? Oh, oh it's a, the yeah. child. Yeah. The child, yes. Yeah. Feeling the other kind of Jamesons made no 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 I a number of Bucko yeah, appearances yeah. somewhere one two two balls and two strikes Charlie Morton didn't touched up for five hits over the first two innings so it only works a full count. Hendricks doesn't walk many. Bouncer to third base. And Bryant takes care of that. One man out. Travis Snyder coming up. Here's our day automotive this day in Pirates history. This date, 1992, the first place Pirates beat the Expos 3 to 2 in 13 innings for their 85th one of the year. See Celeste led off the 13th with a triple and scored the go-ahead run on Jay Bell's infield single. It was Bell's second hit of the game as he extended his hitting streak to 22 games. The streak would end the following day. Snyder takes a strike. One ball, one strike to Travis. Making his fourth start since rejoining the Bucks. No McCutcheon today. Pirates giving him a day off. Snyder hammers one to center field. Way back and gone into the shrubbery. A home run for Snyder. It's three to one. There you go. On the board. Impressive. Travis Snyder goes deep, the deep part of the ballpark. Number 15 given up by Hendricks. Oh, the Bucks on the board. First home run with the Pirates this year is fourth overall. Josh Harrison takes ball one. Ball sitting right there. The Oh, beautifully carved out shrubs. Yep. Tough lie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, baseball. <laughs> Good luck getting it out of there. What club would you use, by the way? Oh, you'd have to dig it out with a wedge. Right after Snyder used about a three iron to get it out there. You got a pretty good idea. That's going to have a lot of carry to it. Not a lot of help from the wind. That ball is tattooed. That clears the air a little bit from this rough start. Well hit early and then Dexter Fowler gives us the idea that uh, he's not going to get to it. Oh, way inside. 408 feet the estimated distance. Yeah that's enough. The spin on that ball, yeah, that good, good, good iron shot. One, two to Josh. Did not go. The count is even two and two. They mentioned Hendricks doesn't walk a lot of guys. Walk three or fewer in his 41 major league starts prior to today. And when you look at uh, 28 starts and just 41 free passes, that is very good. In fact, that stretch of not walking that many guys uh, since 1914, the longest by a Cub pitcher. Pitch number eight to Josh Harrison. We'll get a ninth. Talked about uh, Hendricks coming up through their system after they got him from Texas, split the year last year, Triple Eight tore it up there, and then came up and went seven and two. And they uh, certainly liked their acquisition. One of the things they did like was the control, obviously. Montero hangs on to this foul tip, and Harrison strikes out. 
number three. Not afraid to throw the breaking ball. That much confidence in this control. Full count delivery. Charlie Morton only one for 32 on the year. And the 031. Strike two to him quickly. And that home run by Snyder, the only home run that's been hit in this series. That is rare. The Cubs fourth in the National League and home runs hit. Strike three to Charlie. Pirates get a run on the home run by Travis Snyder. If you can find it, you can keep it. Three one after two. Park and Joe Madden likes to have fun on road trips, much like Clint Hurdle does from time to time. He'll let his players dress up or wear costumes. In fact, the Pirates are going to wear costumes on a leg of this upcoming trip. But after the Cubs series in Los Angeles, they got to wear PJs on their trip back to Chicago. Yes, PJs of their choice. And there were some wild choices. In fact, you can see from this selfie taken by Anthony Rizzo that the players went all out to make sure that they were comfortable on a plane. But I actually. I don't think it really matters what they wore because after that particular game was when Jake Arrieta uh, had a dream night, if you will, by throwing a no hitter against the L.A. Dodgers. He put the Dodgers to sleep. There. Ah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Chris Coughlin hearing it from the fans he was the one that took Jung Ho Gung out of this ball game. He leads off in the third takes a strike. So one to Coglin. Inside and it's one and one. Coglin 0 for 1 today. Doing a lot of room down the third base side. Pirates have shifted to the right. And the ball pulled foul for a strike two. Issues in a, in a play like that at second base, uh, when you really get in trouble, is when your foot is planted. That's when there's not much give. So you try as hard as you can to be nimble out there. You see, shortstops in second base, they're they're jumping all the time, all the way, to, uh, all the time to get out of the way, and uh, he's got caught with a planted foot. Problem down on strikes. 
Number two. Better start here in the third inning. The curve. That's what they call spiking the curve. Throwing, throwing it down in the dirt. The location of that two started it outside. Had enough break on it to get over the plate and down. Way down. Rizzo takes ball one. Hart's been trying to pound Rizzo inside. It's hard to throw inside and get a strike because he's so far over top of the plate. They want in there again. And he just does not give any ground on those inside deliveries. Has he been hit 27, 28 times? Like that. So that doesn't bother him when people come inside. 27 times he's been plunked. And what that does, it makes it difficult for Charlie because he's wanting to throw that sinker that starts in the middle of the plate and just sinks down to the outside corner. But Rizzo is out there because he's so far up on the plate. He takes first base. Charlie issues the walk to Rizzo. Next university night for Pitt fans Wednesday September 30th against the Cardinals by purchasing tickets online you can join fellow fans and alumni of your university for a night at PNC Park and you'll receive a Pirates cap in your university colors. Tickets start at just $19 to receive your hat. Purchase tickets at pirates.com slash pit coming up Wednesday September 30th. One out, Bryant the bat. Throw first, Rizzo back. Don't be surprised to see Rizzo take off. No. 16 steals, and they ran wild last night. Five stolen bases, a number of them uncontested. And Hurdle saying that they are still trying to find ways to improve controlling the running game. Bryant lifts it to left field. Snyder over. He dives. He won't get it. Rizzo rounds second on his way to third. And Brian in with a double. Another hard hit ball off of Charlie Morton. Just out of the reach of Travis Snyder. Stepped on his sunglasses there. Ball well, might have had a little hook on it. Oh yeah, it did. Running away from him. Second and third, one out. Miguel Montero, the batter with the infield in. This one's up in the air to center field. Rizzo will tag over in left center. Montero takes it. He won't go anywhere. And a strike. Not going anywhere. That depth, that arm, that combination. This is the perfect opportunity. Just, just air it out. Nothing else going on. Right there. Snyder was over there, but Marte's ball all the way. Almost throwing a strike. Might have been a strike. Might have been moving back into the strike zone from center field. Infield can move back now with two outs, and they're going to walk Addison Russell and get to the pitcher Hendricks. So this is one time it doesn't work for a manager throwing that pitcher in the number eight spot. Well, let's hope it doesn't work. This is kind of like a situation we saw last night with AJ getting out of these kind of scrambles. Empire pitchers that followed. Charlie got a chance of wiggling out of another mess. Well, the bases are now full. Barrel Automotive League leaders stat has to do with outfield assists, and Starling Marte leads the National League with 13, and there is Gregory Polanco tied for second with Enciarte, Kemp, and Bruce. There's only a few things in life you can be sure of, and we've all heard about that. But going to be sure of Marte getting more assists before the end of the year. 
Strike to Hendricks. Well, the 13 is the most since Jason Bay had 13 in 2007. Pirates outfielder to lead the National League and assist Barry Bonds in 1990. He and Kevin McReynolds had 14 each. They shared the lead in that category. I guess I shouldn't be so sure because uh, when you establish a reputation for having an arm like that, they stop running on you. So hard to rack up a lot of extras. Swing and a miss, strike three. Counts leave and loaded, nothing across. Two strikeouts for Charlie Morton. Top of the order up when we return. Sports tomorrow when the Bucks take on the Dodgers. Get a dose of the local music scene as we highlight bands from around the bird throughout our entire Pirates broadcast. So turn up the volume and check it out tomorrow, starting at 9:30 on Root Sports. Stand up late with us on the West Coast. UPMC scoreboard: Cubs three, Pirates one. Bottom of the third inning. And a beautiful sunny afternoon, Charlie Morton. Running through the raindrops. Didn't get wet at the top of the third, but a zero up. Second time through the order for the Pirates. Polanco struck out looking in the first. We'll take a strike here. View from the on deck circle. Inside. One ball, one strike. Well, while you guys are winging your way to Los Angeles, we're going to be at the Clemente Museum tonight oh, yeah. for their annual fundraiser. Many family will be over there. Look forward to that. Always a great turnout. Great, great place. Uh, you like Pittsburgh Pirate Baseball and you like Roberto Clemente. You've got to make a visit to the Clemente Museum. Dwayne Reader and his staff have done a fabulous job. It'll be a good time tonight. Over in the Strip District? Yep, down, down uh, Penn Avenue. Two and one to Polanco. Engine house number 25. Number 21 out there. This one hit well to center field. Back goes Fowler. This ball is gone. A home run for Polanco. Dead center field. And into the shrubbery. That was a three iron shot. He went down and got that and just blistered it. That was a true, true riser. He caught the bottom half of the ball and just rode it out there. You can tell how much he got of it. Fowler turned his back to home plate thinking it might stay in the ballpark, and it just kept on carrying. 
Went out and got it. Yep. Now a one run ball game at three to two. And that ball. Marte said it hit him on the hand, but that's called a foul ball. Clint Hurdle's coming up the dugout steps. Did it hit the knob of the bat or did it hit Marte's hand? That's the question. Apparently the knob of the bat. He's going back down in the dugout. So it is the knob of the bat and a foul ball, strike one. How about a little back to back action. We haven't seen that in a while. Two impressive home runs to center field. Second shrub shot of the day. Well, that's full extension, as you say. Went out and got it. Didn't pull around the right field, just went out there and got it. That did not take long to get out of here. One and two to Marte. Starling crowned it out to Russell at shortstop, first time up. Gregory's got to be feeling good about that. Leads the inning off with a homer. Number nine. And a one hopper down to Bryant. Top third baseman throws out Marte. Starling 0 for 2. One gone. This will bring up Neil Walker. You know, you, you've got almost a little bit of a feel that this is a Wrigley Field type of a ball game starting out. A lot of action. You know, could have one of those barn burners where everybody gets involved offensively. Walker one for one and a base hit in the first. Three two of the score. Cubs in front. And Walker takes a strike. You know today's the anniversary of? No. Ernie Banks debut. 62 years ago today. 62 years. Let's play two then. And Walker's pumped. So the time runs aboard. No Walker hit by the pitch from Kyle Hendricks. Number 14 they were for Ernie Banks. Passed away before the season. They dedicated the season to Ernie. One of the best. One of the best people you want to run across. This is a, a season that certainly a lot of folks were, were hoping Ernie could see the way the Cubs have been playing. And you get down to first base, and I know it was a rare occasion, Steve, but when you get down to first base, <laughs> did he really say, hey, let's play two? Good day for a game? No, a lot of times that was uh, that was in the first inning when he go out there to play first base. Just you're, you're so close in the dugout. He would holler good day to play two and Jim Bunning who was very very businesslike would holler back at him. <laughs> They'd have a, a good exchange. Ernie was smiling all during the exchange. I don't know how much Jim was. Both. Hall of Famers. Dugout at Wrigley is very close to first base. They're sitting in the box seats are very close to first base though. Nothing and one to Jordy Mercer. Mercer one for one inserted into the lineup in the top of the first inning after Jung Ho Gung was taken out at second base by Chris Coglin. The pitch. And Mercer lines one to the right center. Walker's turning second, heading to third. And Mercer caught in a rundown. Now Walker is going to stay near third base as Jordy's out. The majority a little too aggressive, a lot too aggressive around first base. And the Pirates making out on the base paths, two gone. Just ready to give accolades about being plugged into the lineup after the gun injury, going two for two. That's the good news. The good news also is that ball is cut off at the shortstop position. But here comes Jordy, and he's caught. Just a matter of time now. Don't want to give him outs on the bases like that. Nope. Base running issues continue.
Pedro Alvarez at the plate two down infield back and adjusted over to the right for him. Walker the tying run at third. And Pedro hammers one high in the air to right. Back goes Coglin to the wall. It is gone. El Toro strikes again. And the Pirates lead it four to three. Wow. Tater time. Pittsburgh. The 24th for number 24. Two run shot for Alvarez. And you really like the Clemente wall being short because it just got enough distance, had plenty of height, but. Short porch and right. Made for left-hand power guys. And Pedro got just enough of it. But doesn't matter. You don't have to get a lot of it just as long as you get it. Now a different buzz around this ballpark as the Pirates are up by a run. First lead of the day. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Down and in. Up and out. 2-0 to Cervelli. Strike call, two balls, one strike. Close up, Pedro. Heading downtown. In that direction, anyway. Ball three to Cervelli. Cogden looking straight up at it. Oh, okay, had, had a little... Uh, well, not a lot of wiggle room, but down the hallway. El Toro's 24th home run. A towering fly ball. You saw it just cleared the wall. Three home runs for the Pirates. And we're in the bottom of the third inning. Balls, two strikes to Cervelli. And unlike Wrigley Field, the flag's not doing much. <laughs> well, the Pirates hitters not needing much so far. Payoff pitch. We'll get another. Clayton Jones. Richard now warming up. He was with the Pirates uh, in spring training and in AAA for a while. Joe Madden not waiting around. Bottom of the third. Charlie Morton trying to reboot. Cervelli down on strikes. Pirates strike for three. Two home runs. Gregory Polanco with a line drive smash into the bushes. And with Walker at third base, Pedro Alvarez goes for two.
Pirates have worked their way to a 4-3 advantage over the Cubs heading to the top of the fourth inning. Alvarez, Snyder, and Polanco. Polanco and Alvarez in the last inning. Get on board with Pirates baseball for next year. The Pirates are now accepting deposits for full and partial season ticket memberships. Get access to exclusive events, the best locations and savings, and customizable memberships too. Plus, 2016 season deposits receive 2015 postseason access. Call 1 800 buy bucks to speak to a representative right now. UPMC scoreboard Pirates four, Cubs three, six hits apiece. Wouldn't you love to have Charlie throw up a zero right here in the top of the fourth just to settle things down from his standpoint? Facing the second baseman, Tommy Lestella. Lestella doubled in a run in the second inning. Now you're going to LA. You don't want to say Tommy Lasorda. Oh, <laughs> we'll see Tommy. He's, he's always oh, there. Will you ever? He's always at Dodger Stadium. 1 0. Comes up high. Two balls and no strikes. And the 2 0 on the way. 3 0 now. Charlie falling behind Lestella. Back in the count. Well, we said early when the uh, Cubs jumped out in front quickly with three runs that uh, the Pirates going to have their opportunities. Now the count full. Nothing, nothing like that uh, quick offense, huh? Add water and serve. Three two, and that is past Alvarez. Final ball. So 3 2 to Listella. Not kind of a scrappy player for the Cubs. On his way on base a couple of times during the series so far. Payoff pitch. I'll get another. Nine, one, and two for the Cubs. Stella's three two pitch. Lifted in the air to right. Polanco calling. One out. One gone in the Cubs half of the fourth. We want to see your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag pit data strong fan. You just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Show a photo later today. Warm sunny day at PNC Park. The way September is supposed to be these kind of days. Fowler pops this one foul. Long run for Jordy Mercer, but that'll make the seats. Now these are great days. Midweek, Thursday, day game, early, have lunch at the ballpark. People having a business uh, meeting, whatever business person special today, but a lot of folks just flat out playing hooky. <laughs> Whether it's from school or work, or maybe they got vacation or a day off. Nice to see today. Good crowd here. You're not all dressed up. You do have some place to go. Even though you're dressed up. Good day for doing just about anything. We have folks here at the ballpark. Two and two to Fowler. Fowler singled and scored in the first, grounded out to second. In the second. So many things going for you. If you can find a way to win this ball game, it makes a, a long flight to LA more pleasant. Even up the series. Strike three called. He got him. Number four. Yeah, maybe got a call. That's all right. We'll take it. 
the other thing is if, if you could spread this thing out and, and give yourself a laugh at because there's been a lot of tension uh, these these three games. I mean it uh, uh, hold your breath moments all during the season uh, series. Schwarber swinging for the Allegheny strike one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but very important to win this game today with three games remaining head to head against the Cubs at their place. At the end of a. Road trip a western swing LA Colorado for four. And then three in Chicago. We talked about each game gets magnified day by day now. Strike to Schwarber. The meaning of it gets magnified. Right. And, and you basically chopped off four games of the schedule to a few if you win this game uh, this series you go two and two. And two down on strikes goes Kyle Schwarber a one two three four. The Pirates get the lead for Charlie Morton and he hangs a zero. He's now struck out five. Cannonballs are usually flying out of PNC Park, but recently they've been hurling towards the infield thanks to Pirates outfielders. Plus, we take you inside the Bucks dugout for a team dance party. Inside Pirates Baseball, presented by Allegheny Health Network, tomorrow at 9 on Root Sports. Choreographed by Steve Blash. Yep, you taught him that, didn't you? I did. I wrote the whole script and scenario, dance steps. 4 3 Pirates with the lead, and they're facing Clayton Richard now. Kyle Hendricks has been chased from the ball game. Travis Snyder leading off. And Hendricks out after three innings, giving up four earned runs. And now in is Richard. Numbers for him, appearance number 18. He's given up three home runs. Snyder ground ball to the right side. Rizzo grabs it, and he. Gets to the bag first. Hendricks, three innings, four runs, six hits, no walks, five strikeouts. Going the home run ball. Clayton Richard thought he'd be pitching in the big leagues with the Pirates this year. Did not happen. Harrison today struck out. He's 0 for 1. Pitch inside. Clayton Richard out of the University of Michigan. Drafted by the White Sox in 2005 after leaving the Wolverines. He was an eighth rounder. 
That ball right back to him. Underhand toss to first. Two men out. Yep, the uh, line that you just saw now indicates that he has worked 36 innings, 40 hits given up. And Richard was a two sport athlete. He was a football player and a quarterback, just like Joe Madden was in college. And he was a uh, two sport athlete at a pretty high level, he playing quarterback and baseball. Big Ten school like Michigan. It's a good high level. Charlie Morton to the right side and Rizzo handles that. Three quick ground balls, a quiet inning for the Pirates in the fourth. We'll head to the fifth. Bucks four, Cubs three. Shots from the Allegheny Health Network Super Mall telling part of the story today. 4 3, Pirates leading it as we head to the fifth inning. Keep up with the pennant races and true HD quality on MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service. And college students enjoy a back to school offer with 35% off discount. Authentication required. Blackouts and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv today. Steve Blass, I'm Tim Never, Dan Potash with us as well. Chris Coglin coming to the plate for the second time since the takeout slide of Jung Ho Gung in the first. And the Pirates are a very shifty group here in the top of the fifth. Hard to see with all that camouflage, but they're stacked over there. And the camouflage uniforms every Thursday home game, a military appreciation day. Charlie came close. Just toss one behind him, see how he reacts. Two balls and a strike to Coglin. Shot to right. That is cut off by Polanco. He bobbles it, throw to second base, and Coglin is there, and that bobble cost him. A double for Coglin. As he took second base on Gregory Polanco, he did not make a clean play. And even if it doesn't cause him to get the extra 90 feet, it still doesn't look good. It doesn't uh... Give you that good feel. 
Maybe he's got a double all the way. Maybe not. Maybe he holds him at first base. Moot point now. Tying run in scoring position. Nobody out. First baseman Anthony Rizzo up. Looking right down the barrel at the meat of their batting order. 24 doubles for Coglin this year. He has had extended playing time with the Cubs, primarily in left field. And then when Kyle Schwarber came on the scene, they wanted him to get his bat in the lineup. Schwarber a catcher. So Coglin moved over to right when uh, Soler was not available. Coglin really this season has been in the right place at the right time for the Cubs. Rizzo clubs one to right. And the Cubs have retaken the lead on a two run home run for Rizzo. His 30th of the season. This has officially become a Wrigley Field game. RBI is 91 and 92 for Rizzo. 30 home runs. Big year for the Cubs first baseman. Now Charlie had a clean inning in the fourth, striking out two, and it's started off anything but clean here in the fifth. Look at the location of that pitch, though. <laughs> You throw a pitch down underneath the strike zone. And those lefties love to go down, get under the ball, give it the lift, give the Cubs the lead. Not a single home run hit in this series until today. Now, four of them through four innings plus two batters. That guy can really hit. That was Look at this guy. That was impressive. And Bryant takes a strike. Joe Blanton now warming up for the Pirates. Instant action. Looks down 5 4 now. Hey, hold up. Well, there's like a couple heavyweights going at it. Heavy punches being thrown. Cub fan ended up with that home run ball, and there's a base hit by Bryant. They are getting to Morton. A lot of times, Clint Hurl will say it's not the number of pitches, it's, it's you judge with your eyes on how the opposition is, is hitting. Yeah. And Roan uh, phone ringing, and yeah. Yuki Rojas checking. Phone, Glenn Hurdle calling him to check on Blanton. Yeah, they might want to try. Yeah, Cervelli's going out to buy time because this is so abrupt here in the top of the fifth inning. Double home run single to start things off. The lead is gone. And Charlie just hitting too many bats. Nine hits for the Cubs. Looks like Clint's poised and. And ready to go up. He's going to double check on Blanton again. Seeing if he's ready. I can hear the phone. A lot of people can hear the phone. So got the word. Now he's coming to make the change. So Charlie Morton will go four plus three hitters today. A one run ball game once again at PNC Park between the Pirates and the Cubs. And Charlie's afternoon has come to a conclusion. Joe Blanton will replace some pitching change here in Pittsburgh. Time out.
and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. 5-4 Cubs, top of the fifth. And one on for Chicago, nobody out. Charlie Morton finished after four plus innings and here is Joe Blanton taking over. Overall numbers as he makes appearance number 16. Joe Blanton has done a great job for the Pirates. Last 25 innings he has pitched he's given up three earned runs. That's a combination that translates out to a 1.08 ERA. Joe Blanton has been a terrific pickup for the Pirates. Let me just make uh, one statement here. This ball game will not end 5-4. It's that kind of an afternoon. So stick around. You can see some action. Tough afternoon for Charlie. Chris Bryant's second hit of the afternoon, two for threes at first. And the batter will be Miguel Montero. Montero singled and scored in the second inning and flied out to center field in the third. For the first base, and Bryant back. That's one thing that hasn't been an issue so far today has been the running game of the Cubs. The hitting game has been, but not the running game. But uh, we're still early on. Well, the first, and Brian falls back. Brian with 13 stolen bases. Pretty legitimate move to first by Joe Blanton, who's been around. Certainly in on the Team meeting, the pitchers meeting, knowing about the Cubs' pension to run. Montero grounds it to first. That's off the glove of Alvarez. And now Bryant held at third base. Runners at the corners. And that will be an error on Pedro. Chance to get an out right here, and it doesn't happen. Up off the top of the glove and down into the corner. Routine ground ball. And again, it's Montero running, so you automatically think about the possibilities of a double play. Not to be. Nobody out runners at the corners and it comes with a chance to add on Addison Russell. Who doubled in a run in the second inning and was intentionally walked in the third. Swings and misses. Two forty one for Russell. Well once again you'll make the deal for a ground ball. Double play, give up the run because there, there's going to be scoring today. So I'd like to write the script where he gets a strikeout, then the double play ball. We've talked about that in the past. I I like your your thought better than mine. Right. First thinking double play and then working from there. Well, the two for one trade off. I understand. Two strikes. And a shot up the middle of base hit. Bryant scores six to four Chicago. Second RBI for Addison Russell. Three runs into the inning for Chicago. And the door is open. It's a perfect opportunity for Hendricks to bunt. Excuse me, for Hendricks is gone. Forgot about that for the moment. Clayton Richard. He's one for 12 this year. No sacrifices yet. 
Pedro creeping in from first. And a strike is delivered. away from Cervelli. What's next? The wheel is wobbling here this afternoon. And that just does the job for the Cubs. Montero to third, Russell to second. Should be a pass ball. The ruling. Infield comes in, still nobody out. And Clayton Richard lines one to the gap in left center, and it's going to roll to the notch. Two runs will score. Richard in with a two run double. And an artery has been cut here at PNC Park. And the Pirates are hearing about it. Five spot in the fifth. Eight to four, Chicago. And I know how this kind of thing works in the Cubs dugout. They're all hollering out to him. Yeah. Pirates didn't want you. I mean, that's that's uh, that's the way this kind of stuff goes. I think most Teammates, uh, players would feel that way yeah, themselves yeah. too. Yeah. I'm sure, the Pirates gave an opportunity. Oh yeah. Nobody yeah, else. It's, it's, nobody it's, else wanted him. Yeah. And uh, the Pirates gave an opportunity, got him ready to get back to the big leagues. Cubs decided they liked him. And, uh, Pirates and Cubs worked out a deal. And Richard out at second base after driving in two runs. I remember being in a dugout as, as a player, and we'd get a, a, a player from another team that would do some damage to his previous team. Yeah, yeah, that'll teach him. I mean, that's just the way the the by play goes back and forth. Then we'll still a go. No appeal. Three and one. Still nobody out. Five runs in for Chicago. An explosive inning here for the Cubs after going down 4 3. And really no reason to think the Pirates can't have one of these. I mean, the way today is gone. A lot of time left to try to chip away. Three two. Yeah. That's a base hit. They're going to wave Richard home. Marte's throw cut, not cut off. Pedro let it go through. And Clayton Richard scores. It's now nine to four. And this is not funny. Second hit for La Stella. And a good job of hitting again. A, a decent pitch thrown. A good pitch thrown. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Blanton will get relieved of duty after Richard comes in to score. Blanton did not retire a batter. He faced four. Gave up three hits, had one reach on an error. Three runs so far charged to him.
Or has four runs for the Pirates on six hits. Two errors. One leading directly to a run this inning. And color her happy. Yep. No matter what the score is. She didn't know the difference. That's okay. Yeah. She's having fun anyway. But look at she might have an idea. <laughs> she wants her purse. Charlie Morton, 76 pitches today, 48 strikes, went four plus three hitters, and Joe Blanton faces four men, doesn't retire anybody. And now Bobby Laframboise comes on to pitch. Cubs have sent seven men to the plate already this inning, and not a single out recorded. Fowler batting right handed against Laframboise. Ball one. Struck out looking in the fourth. And a base hit. The Cubs cannot make an out this inning. They're going to bat around here. Kyle Schwarber, the ninth man to come to the plate. Fowler now two for four. And Joe Madden right now doesn't have to do that much managing. He can sit back a little bit. From Hurl, on the other hand, has to hope that my friend boys can start to get some outs. Well, this is uh, ugly. Schwarber tries to bunt. That doesn't have a good feel no, to it for I me. I was just going to ask you about that. No. Five runs up, you, you're batting around, you get nobody out, two men on, and you try to bunt. And, and I know you never know how many you're going to need or anything. It just when, when you're down on this side, maybe, maybe the game has changed and that it, it, it's more legit. It's five runs. Just when it's happening to you, it just doesn't feel good. As you stay put. And the way Schwarber swings the bat, you'd think he'd want to swing the bat. Seven hits this inning. How would you want to bunt? Two balls and a strike. Our well, friend boys trying to find the first out of this inning. And as the Cubs right now have their foot on the Pirates' neck. There's a ground ball to second. Off of the foot to Mercer for one. Too late at first. They get one out in the middle. And the Cubs with runners at the corners. Four six on the four sound in the middle. Oh Schwarber reaches base, and Conglin will not come up again. Austin Jackson will pinch hit for him in the fifth. Coglin doubled to start this whole mess off in the first. When he doubled to right field, Gregory Polanco did not make a clean play on it. He bobbled the ball, and Coglin took an extra base. And that's how this whole inning began. And this kind of thing gets contagious. The Pirates finally get an out, but uh, back down looking at a big part of the batting order after Jackson. Not that there's anything wrong with him. And these kind of runs just uh, you go up there feeling like you're going to hit. Just a very relaxed approach right now. And the game not over by any means, but it's really, really not looking very good at all.
Oh, and two to Jackson. One out, two on. Off round boys ready to deliver. And a ground ball right to Walker. He steps on the back for one double play. Six runs for the Cubs. They send ten men to the plate. Nine four. Halfway through the fifth. Fifth inning. Chick fil A double play occurs to end the top of the fifth. Finding a ball that's hit at somebody. Didn't get much easier than this. Play catch back over to first base. And now, you know, what, what's crazy, as bad as this looks, Tim, you put a run or two up on the board now, but, you know, Go down and ask Joe Madden if this ball game is over. So take a look at Austin Jackson taking over in right field. You go to work. That's that's what you got to do. This is a this is the bottom of the fifth inning. Glenn Hurdle talking to Francisco Cervelli about the inning. I'd like to hear that answer. <laughs> Asking Francisco what happened. Gregory Polanco one for two. He homered to lead off the third inning. I'm never sure what the conversations entail in the dugouts. Should never really speculate. Gregory showed bunt twice. He's got a one-one count. Pirates need base runners now down by five runs. Not going to get one that way. One out. Take a look at the four bats against Richard. Ground ball to first, ground ball to pitcher, ground ball to first, ground ball to pitcher, pitcher. Let's try somebody else. Get away from Richard Rizzo. Marte is 0 for 2. He's also had a couple of ground outs, one to short, one to third. 281 for Marte on the season. Come on, right back to Richard. They're playing Pepper. They're making it easy on Richard right now. It's three ground outs back to the Cub pitcher since he's entered the game. The other two to Rizzo. Not getting a lot of wood on the ball these last four at bats. Two outs quickly in the home half of the fifth. Walker batting right handed takes a strike. 
hope nobody's adding up the distance of these last four at bats. Pitch for Clayton Richard will be the seventh of the inning. Looks like he's going to have an economical inning. Just seven pitches, three ground outs. It's been six up, six down since he entered the ball game. Nine four Cubs going to the sixth. Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Just ask a neighbor. And by LaViz, the official furniture and mattress supplier of the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop LaViz. Let's go Bucks! Rick Beatty. From the splash cam, giving us a great shot. Rick's last game of the season today. Thanks for that. Visual Rick. Can you do something about the score, though? That's what we want to know. Nine four. Cubs in front. That's the splash cam that gives us that shot. Robotically from the upper right field corner. So takes a strike from Bobby Lafram boys. We start to come half of the sixth. Well, he got it going with his 30th home run to uh, officially start the scoring. Last inning. Seems like a long time ago. Played the top of the fifth. Just a little bit outside. One ball, one strike. Balls in one strike. Two one delivery. And that's a strike, and it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes to count. Left round boys to Anthony Rizzo. And a base hit against the shift. And Rizzo will head for second base, and he'll be in with a double. I was just continuing to wrap up the hits. 14th hit for North Chicago. Well, 
Shift doesn't work all the time. This is one of those afternoons. Chris Bryant, a couple of hits today, single double run scored. And a stretch by Lafran Boys, Rizzo off second. Bobby will pay attention to him. Well, Tim, we got an indication of what was going on when Dexter Fowler hit the first pitch of the ball game into right center field. But, uh, as you look back, wound up being a preview. Two and older Bryant. Well, Bryant awaits the next offering from La Framboise. Got him out front, two and one. Things have settled down in the respective bullpens. Nothing happening out there, so this, for the time being, belongs to Bobby Offering Boyce. Strike call, two and two. Nobody out. Cub half of the sixth inning. Rizzo a leadoff double. This is one of these situations too, Tim, where you're you're going into a tough looking series, so you want your your key bullpen guys to be fresh as you go out there to play the Dodgers. So uh, this could be a long session, successful or not, for Bobby. Clint hurdle some innings, save some arms, perhaps, unless it gets closer, and then of course all bets are off. Three two pitch. Well, well. He's walked it. Two men on, nobody out. This will bring up Miguel Montero. Frustrating afternoon so far for Clint Hurdle and the Pirates. Things have not gone their way. Just briefly did they in the third inning when the Bucks had two home runs, one from Polanco and a two run shot from Alvarez. That and euphoria is gone. Yep. Took a 4 3 lead and then the wheel fell off the cart in the fifth. Cubs sent 10 men to the plate, scored six runs. Montero pulls the foul ball. Nothing and one to Miguel Montero. Fly ball to right and deep. Back is Polanco on the track, and he will make the catch. Rizzo will move from second to third. One man out. And he didn't miss that by much. Addison Russell's had a big afternoon so far. Two RBIs, two hits, a single and a double. And he has scored twice. My favorite shot doesn't even look that good this afternoon. Many times, like looking out at the field from that angle. Usually a pretty picture. Well, we keep hoping for damage control because <laughs> you never know in this kind of a ball game. So, see if you can get yourself a ground ball at somebody. 
Leave the runner at third base. Get back into the dugout. Also squares the bunt. Josh Harrison and Bobby Lafran boys having a word. The raspberry, that's what that means in French. Lafram boys. You know that? I do. I do. The story there. Uh, they used to buy uh, an adult beverage called Royal Fremois, and it was along those lines. It was a raspberry based. I read about it. I never got near it. Read, read an article about it. Long time ago, probably. Yep. In fact, it was introduced here in Pittsburgh. Firm butt, and Pedro comes to the plate. Safe. Rizzo slides under the high throw. Underhand toss went high. Cervelli had to catch it and come back down. And by the time he did, Rizzo was under the tag for the run. It's 10 to 4. And Clint Hurdle is coming out and he wants to have a word with Greg Gibson. He's already telling him you review that. And we've had issues with this in the last 24 hours plays at the plate. The toss goes upstairs and you can see. That he gets under the tag or appeared. First look but. The damage to Cervelli. It's a. Gung out. You hope that this is nothing serious for Francisco. See the leg coming under now, Cervelli on his feet. Let's see where Francisco, the, the right side of Cervelli is uh, out in front of the plate. Did he make a high tag? That's one of the questions you'd ask. So it is not the uh, same situation we had last night. They're just challenging safer out. Let's see from this angle. Bring the tag down. Well, he might have got him. Might have got him because it looks like Rizzo maybe didn't have full extension there. Let's see if this angle shows us. To the foot. Ah, hard to tell there. A lot of dust. A lot of chalk. Tag is made. You can see where the tag is made on the hip, but where was the foot and where was the contact on the plate? The replay Operations Center will review every angle and then give us their, their report. Well, the good news is Cervelli is on his feet. And we'll know shortly. Jim Joyce, the crew chief on the right, Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire on the left. And he's out. But well, the challenge works. The call is overturned. Take the run off the board. Nine to four still. See, it looks like that front leg might have been to the side of home plate. Yeah, I'm wondering if that left foot was uh, just uh, to the left of home place, first base side. Regardless, we get the second out. Clayton Richards second at bat. He had a two-run double first time up. And he takes a strike. So the Pirates get the benefit of the replay today, where that wasn't the case last night. A lot of folks still scratching their head about the call last night and the explanation in particular. Well, one pitch, swing and a miss. Pedro Flormon sliding in while Montero clearly blocked the plate. 
last night's game in the eighth inning. Swing and a miss. And Richard is out. Nothing across for the Cubs in the sixth. Longtime broadcaster, former Pirates broadcaster, 1976 through 1979 with the Pirates, uh, passing away at the age of 88. He Hall of Famer. Worked game with the Braves, uh, the Cubs, the Astros, and uh, finished his career with the Astros. And the guy whose uh, signature line was uh, Holy Toledo. And Milo Hamilton, a guy we've had the opportunity to meet and spend time with uh, while the Pirates were in the Astros division, saw Milo quite a bit. Uh, just a uh, nice man and uh, uh, gone now at age 88. Loved his time in Pittsburgh, loved coming back. He had a favorite restaurant here in Pittsburgh, Pole Eyes, out in Squirrel Hill. Was here for the 1979 championship, the Pittsburgh Pirates. 1 0 pitch to Mercer. Ground ball deep short. Russell guns it, yeah! and a pick by Rizzo at the end. Well, one of Milo Hamilton's most famous calls, 715th home run by the, Hank Aaron. The famous. Here's the pitch by Downing. Swinging. There's a drive into left center field. That ball is going to be out of here. It's gone. It's 715. There's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. The fireworks are going. Henry Aaron is coming around third. His teammates are at home plate. And to this crowd. Milo Hamilton had lost a legend, a yeah. broadcasting legend. Called many, many great moments, including that one. You know who the left fielder was climbing the wall for the Dodgers? No. Bill Buckner. Gene Elson, also baseball legendary broadcaster. Passed away September 5th. So it's been uh, tough for the Astros the last few weeks, losing two folks very close to their organization. So that shot of Gunners, Lowndes, uh, Prince, gone for so many years now. Milo Hamilton actually replaced Bob Prince. Mm -hmm. What a tough act that was to follow. And Gene Elston, and Milo Hamilton. And Milo left the Pirates in '79, went to work for the Cubs in 1980, before heading down to Houston after a stint with Chicago. 2 2 pitch to Pedro. And he's got himself a base hit. Rounding first, holding there. That 
Rogers. Remember that uh, that distinctive uh, tone of voice from Milo Hamlin. I'll tell you, brother. <laughs> Greg Brown does that a lot better than, than I do. One thing Milo was known for too during the seventh inning stretch. You know, you you on Sunday throw out gifts to your adoring public. <laughs> Each game he would throw out Cracker Jack. Uh, Bounds of Cracker Jack. Yep. Michael Morse batted. Looks like. So Valley will be done for the day. Morse hitting for him. And Morse rips one to left center field. What a pinch hit for Michael Morse. Now nine for 27 as a pinch hitter. Back to back singles for the Pirates in the sixth inning. And I'll say it again when the score was 5-4. I said it. That's not going to be a final. This current score is not going to be a final. Chris Stewart in the dugout. He'd come in. But yep. One guy we've not seen catch yet is Elias Diaz, who was brought up from Triple A. We've seen him pinch hit. But the chances of him uh, getting into a game probably slim at this point until whatever postseason is decided, postseason situation. Maybe we see him today. Who knows? Well, if we get closer, chances are you won't. Uh, you know, think of this: we're, we're five runs down. Snyder hits the ball over the fence. Here. <laughs> now it's two run game. You got a lot of living to do. Snyder put one in the bushes in the second inning. He's got a nice hitter's count here, two and one. Clayton Richard had retired seven straight before Alvarez got a hit. All on ground balls, too, by the way. Shot double play. What a day for the Cubs. Everything going their way. Zippity doodah. We move to the seventh at PNC Park. Cubs nine, Pirates four.
Network Super Bowl capturing some kids around the ballpark today enjoying this wonderful weather day with the Cubs getting the better of the Pirates so far through six innings nine runs on 14 hits Pirates four runs on eight hits folks down the left field line getting a lot of sun Chris Stewart behind the plate the battery Scahill and Stewart Bob Scahill pitching to Tommy Listella. Stewart comes into the ninth spot in the batting order. He'll bat second in the bottom of the seven. Scahill goes into Cervelli's spot. Double switch. 27th game for Scahill. Great start to the year. Forearm tightness. And the rehab, rehab for an extended period of the minor leagues. That's an out here as the Stella flies to left. Scahill gets the first out. He'll now face the top of the order in Dexter Fowler. Takes low and in ball one. There's one other major league game going on this afternoon. It's on the south side of Chicago. The Oakland A's and the White Sox. Oakland leading one nothing. Bottom of the third. Everything else later. Ground ball second base. And Walker throws out Fowler for the second out at the top of the seventh. Chance for a one, two, three inning. Charlie had one in the fourth, but it all got away in the fifth. Cubs put up the sixth spot. Yep, nothing wrong with the day, that's for sure. Except when you get down kind of to this level and remember. It'll be a nice day to fly. We'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nicer with the wind. <laughs> it's always nicer with the wind. Always. Sixteen games to play after this one today. As the regular season schedule winds down and every single game extremely meaningful. Especially when it concerns these Cubs. Jump right out to LA and uh, deal with the Dodgers and then the Rockies and right back to Chicago to deal with these Cubbies again. Mercer grabs it, throws out Schwarber, and Scahill has a clean seventh. Stretch time, the PNC Park Cubs nine, Pirates four.
They had to find a way to carve into this lead for Chicago. Let's take a look at this tweet from Point Park University. Sorry to hear about Milo Hamilton. He and Lenny Frattari have big shoes to fill. They did a great job. R.I.P. Milo. Yep. Following Bob Prince. So some changes now for the Cubs. Kristen Orfeo goes out in the left field. Javier Baez moves to second base. That's the third infield position we've seen him play in this series. Played short and third. And Josh Harrison will lead off for the Pirates. Mr. Richard has done a tremendous job following Hendricks. Foul ball for Josh, strike one. Yeah, Hendricks just went three innings today, gave up four earned runs and six hits. Clayton Richard has come in. And he starts his fourth inning of work. And Harrison hits this one well to left center. Fowler running after it, he will not get it. It bounces over the wall and into the bullpen for a double. And that off double for Harris. And that will accelerate the program in the Cubs bullpen because uh, Joe Madden knows he's got a significant lead and he has stretched out Clayton Richard. Still no real stress for the Cubs, but. Uh, they're mindful of every game. They're mindful of the fact they've got to control of this ball game, and he won't let Richard go too far as he works in his fourth inning. Chris Stewart up for the first time, takes ball one. Double number 23 for Josh. His 102nd hit of the year. Two and zero. Oh. Justin Grimm getting loose. <laughs> two zero oh pick. Swing and a miss. And that's two and one. Buckos need to find a way here late. Going to run out of outs. Down five runs, bottom of the seventh. At home, Steve, this year, day games at PNC Park. The Pirates are 17 and 2, 50 and 24 overall at home. It's the third straight year Clint Hurdle's team has had at least 50 wins at home. Makes everybody in Pittsburgh happier, playing better at home. High chopper over the mound. Russell, quick release gets Stewart down to third base. Harrison. Host your next special event here at the ballpark. PNC Park is perfect for corporate outings, weddings, bar bond mitzvahs, and more. Catering options are available in the Lexus Club, Pittsburgh Baseball Club, or Rivertown Brewing Hall of Fame Club at PNC Park. For more information, 1 800 buy bucks or pirates.com slash PNC Park events. Hall of Fame Club can host your event. Had a number of events in there. Big venue. Just one of many here at the ballpark. Lexus Club, the, uh, the club level is nice for events. There was uh, one there yesterday. Up 3,000. You get Gunners. See all the great Bob Prince memorabilia that's there. There aren't too many bad areas in this ballpark. Keystone Corner, also a pretty good one. Budweiser Bowtie Bar. You can even have an event there. Polanco down the right field line. This ball is off the very top of the wall. Harrison will score, and Gregory is going to be held to an extremely long single. Oh, my goodness. Just not quite enough height. RBI for Polanco, second one of the ball game. 
This ball was ripped. The breaking ball stayed in there. Right off that yellow area just below the home run piping that goes along just across that, just above that yellow area, and uh, Joe Madden will make the change. Hmm. Clayton Richard exits. Justin Grimm enters. 9-5 the score. Nine five, but cinching a little closer. Yep, working nine to five. And uh, just a whole different feel. You're you're that close to getting a quick two spot. You got one in. But, uh, that would give you a lot better feel. You'd be three down. You're still four down, but uh, stay tuned. Ball's flying all over the place. Justin Grimm's first pitch of the game. There goes Polanco. Throw down, not in time. Stolen base for Gregory. So that's good because when you hit the ball that well, that hard, that deep to right field, you figure at least you're going to have is, is two bases, but he wasn't able to get it because it got out there so quickly, but he winds up at second base. See that little separation there? And Polanco's feet come off the bag just for that one moment. Mm -hmm. and that's where he got caught earlier in the season. But the uh, infielder did not keep his glove on Polanco. Nick Sofield looking for a little more company. Where the feet get separated from the base, right there. See? Yeah. And what happened before, I think, and then Brandon Phillips of the Reds was the first guy to really leave the tag on him, and they reviewed it, and he was out. That's one thing that Polanco's been working on to try to keep contact with the base. Marte hits one to center field. Bauer going back on the track. This will get Polanco to third base. Almost. Got a lot of it, not quite enough. Two outs and a runner at third. A lot of height to measure that ball with. batting. He takes a ball down low. 
So the four spot on the uh, list of numbers for Justin Grimmies giving up four long balls. Walker to left field. Going back is to Northfield. Still no he won't get it. And a double for Walker. Another run comes in. 9-6. Walker's second hit of the afternoon. No breeze. That was impressive going to the opposite field. New Walker with a lot of carry. Pushing that 96 mile an hour fastball on one hop into the stands. We talk about if the Pirates come back and find some way to take this ball game. He, huh. That would be an enormous field. We're working at it. Still got some weapons on the bench in this ball game too. We're in the seventh inning. Stay tuned. Jordy Mercer had to replace Jung Ho Gung in the first inning. After Gung was taken out by Chris Coglin, Gung had to leave the ball game, a left knee injury. And Mercer. Is two for three. It could have been three for three if it wasn't for Addison Russell's really good play in the sixth inning. And Polanco with a base hit, stolen base, a run batted in. And now Walker in scoring position. 0 2. Mercer goes down swing. Pirates get two back in the seventh. Heading to the eighth inning. Cubs nine, Pirates six. Tough spot for Jung Ho Gun taken out on that play. As Chris Coglin slides into his left leg, bends his knee the wrong way, had to leave the game. In case you're joining us late, this is what it looked like. As he had to be helped to the clubhouse. One of the team doctors uh, right there, Patrick DeMail. Pirates cut it a little closer now as we start the eighth inning. 9 6. Walker doubling home Polanco. And Rob Scahill will start his second inning of work and he'll face Austin Jackson. Strike call. For one of the game is Jackson. Cubs got him in the last day of August. He passed through waivers. Well, the last day you could make a trade while getting through waivers, the Cubs picked him up from Seattle. 
Jake Arietta, who had been taken in most of the game in the clubhouse, did not pick up win number 20. Nope. Still, Still 19, <laughs> but eight innings for the fourth straight game. Certainly pitched well enough to pick it up. You know, the last Cub was to go. John eight. Lieber, 2001. No, 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 we know that one. 20 wins, right? But the last Cub to have four straight outings of eight solid innings? Uh, no, I don't. Sorry, I jumped the gun on you. You did. You did. You jumped the gun. Strikeout. Jackson is out. Greg, Greg Maddox, by the way. Nissan Road ahead. Jeff Locke tomorrow night will oppose Zach Greinke. Greinke with a 161 earned run average, 17 and 3. Then Clayton Kershaw, the lefty, faces the Pirates lefty, Francisco Liriano, on Saturday night. Sunday, Garrett Cole opposite Brent Anderson. Who's recently announcing Anderson to be the uh, third starter in the Pirates series? Originally, it was going to be Cranky Saturday, Kershaw Sunday, but they moved them up. And now Anderson will pitch the Sunday game opposite Cole. Hope you'll stay up late with us on the West Coast this weekend. Rizzo was in the hole 0 2. Now, who, who is the pitcher you're mentioning that? Greg Maddox. Maddox was okay. the last uh, I was, uh, hiding my embarrassment that I jumped the gun. Fly ball toward the left field line. Long run for Snyder. And he will not get it. It's a foul ball. There is not much room if you're going to commit going across the chalk, but. He had uh, more room. I could hit the very tip of his glove. Yeah. Second ball just out of his reach. This one, a foul ball. One out, base is empty. The field shifted over to the right for Rizzo. Walker in the outfield grass. Harrison also on second base in the outfield grass. Rizzo had a two run homer in the fifth. And that's been the big inning. The fifth inning for the Cubs when they put six runs up. Charlie Morton had to leave after three batters. Joe Blanton after four. Neither retired a hitter. Bobby Lafrenne boys came in to finish it up. Ended up getting a double play off the bat of Austin Jackson to end that inning. Two and two to Rizzo. Pulled that one to the right side. One hopper in right field. And Walker gets it. Second guy we've seen thrown out from right field in this series. This homestand, but not the, the same way. Mm. Long throw for Neil. He was way out there in short right field. His traditional throw has to air it out. Pedro goes up and brings it down. And Jason Hamill. I'm sorry. It was uh, Trevor Cahill was thrown out. That one splits the infielders. And second base uncovered. Brian heading there, and he's going to be safe. A short double. It's like a crossing route. A couple of receivers. Ball gets away. Well, Scahill recognizing right away that the bag was going to be uncovered. That puts a pretty quick ta uh, tag on Bryant, but Bryant beat him to the base. So a single for Bryant. They'll record an error for Jordy Mercer. Hmm. Interesting. Scoring there. Walk Miguel Montero with first base open.
Addison Russell on deck. Nine six ball game in favor of Chicago. Top of the eighth. Two out and very shortly there'll be two on. So 15 hits and three errors. For the Chicago offense. So in that a five run lead Joe put the uh, note card away now that it's a three run lead he's got his notes back out. Yep. Russell two for three. RBIs each time he's had a hit. RBI base hit in the fifth. RBI double back in the second. A strike to Russell. Rob Scahill's 0 1 pitch. Two on, two out for Chicago. If the Pirates cannot come back in this one, they'll have lost a four game series for the first time this year. They've not lost a four gamer. They've tied four of them and won the rest. They have a zero in the loss column when you look at the four gamers they've played. And still one more to go in the regular season with the Rockies on the road on this road trip. Okay, Hills 2-1 to Russell. Tapped right back to him. Oh, another zero for Scahill. Gives up a hit. Two man left. Pirates to the bat rack in the bottom of the eighth. By T Mobile, Richard England at Clemente's Bridge here at the ballpark with uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Very nice. There's our T Mobile, got a strong fan photo of the game. Some uh, Jeff Bannister fans, apparently, Texas Ranger Caps, they have first place, taking a game and a half lead over Houston. Beat him up last night. Beat up the Astros. Sean Rodriguez has a bat in the on deck circle. Pedro Alvarez will lead off. Pedro's two for three. Homered. Got a two run shot back in the third inning. And will face a new pitcher, Travis Wood. Wood making his 47th appearance for the Cubs. Five and four. Performance hitting two 
44 against him. Done some starting, but now in the Cubs bullpen. Well, Pedro. Well, that home run in the third, his 24th of the year, it was his 61st regular season home run at PNC Park. Ties it with Jason Bay for second all time at this ballpark. Andrew McCutcheon, the all time leader here at PNC Park with 72. Left on left matchup and and Hurdle will leave Pedro in games like this that are close when needs one big swing. Pedro has that game changing swing. Good part of the year he's been taken out for a defensive replacement. Just all depends on the score and the situation. Montero sets up outside. Pedro swings and misses. He's down on strikes. Rodriguez will hit for Scahill next as Pedro is out. It's running out of outs. It's been a scoring change, by the way, Steve, on Chris Bryant's play. It was originally scored a single and an error. It's now been changed to a double. That's what I thought originally. But I had to get Pearl out to make that adjustment. Pearl is Steve's trusty eraser. Mm -hmm. So back to just two errors, but there have been certainly other issues. Can you erase the score with that error? With that uh, I'm eraser? Try, I, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> You're the only one I know that has an eraser like that. No. Well, you mentioned the gunner the other day, or the other inning, it seems like the other day. Uh, he used to have pink pearl. Oh, huh? no balls, two strikes to Sean Rodriguez. Travis Wood getting a sign from Montero. And Wood's pitch. Trying to go inside and missed. Some people have worry beads. I've uh, rubbed uh, pink pearl into uh, what doesn't look like a, an eraser anymore. It's more like a dog bone now. Dog biscuit, yeah. Ground ball to short. Addison Russell throws out Sean Rodriguez, and there are two gone. Rodriguez out. And this will bring up Travis Snyder. Snyder one for three today, a home run back in the second inning. Travis hit the ball hard his last time up in the sixth, but ended up in the glove of Addison Russell. With Alvarez caught off second base, Russell just stepped on the bag and got a double play. Thick as thieves. One ball, one strike to Travis. Travis pitching to Travis. The other Travis not a bad hitter either. Wood. <laughs> Good hitting pitcher. Doesn't get too many opportunities. Sometimes during the regular season with a 25 man roster, Joe Madden will use him as a regular pinch hitter. So he has perhaps a, a much different role than a number of relief pitchers. Yeah. Did some starting, as you said. He's given up 11 home runs, most of them probably as a starter, which prompted perhaps his move to the bullpen. Three and Travis flips the bat. He knew it. Travis Wood strikes out two. Pirates gone in order. We head to the ninth. Nine six Chicago.
to the ninth inning we go. The final game of this homestand for the Pirates. The penultimate homestand coming to a close. Pirates trying to find a way to hang a zero and then get three. Sean Rodriguez stays in the game. He'll play left field. And for the Pirates pitching, that was Vance Worley. Facing his counterpart, Travis Wood, who swings and misses. Rob Scahill is holding the fort as you take a look at Vance Worley's numbers. Ball in one strike. Vance starting eight games. Vance ahead of him now. There's your good hitting pitcher. Three for 28, just 107. Doesn't look like it's that good, but he gets opportunities. Must be something in the resume. Yeah, four career, nine home runs. Yeah, do it. That's the resume. Especially when you play your home games at Wrigley, get one good swing. You put it way out in left center field in Steve Blast territory. Yeah. Where Steve used to hit all that all that home run. Yep, and one consecutive home run, and one in a row. You were consistent. Huh? One straight. All right, you and Bob and uh, Garrett Cole are all in the same club with one home run all at Wrigley. Yep. yep. Now, you a big home run hitter? Wiffle ball all the time. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Knock it out of here. Up in the air to shallow right center. Walker calling for it. Called off by Polanco. <laughs> Wood is out. And there's one out for the Cubs in the ninth. No, I was leadoff guy most of the time. Set the table. Yep. Javier Baez swings and hits one up the middle. Backhanded by Walker. High throw, and Pedro missed the tag. Should be an error on Walker. Wide throw toward home plate. That ball just barely got by Vance Worley. I thought Vance might have a chance. Then it got to me. Well, they're kind of call this a base hit. Walker makes a routine throw. He's out by two steps. That's uh... anyway. By his aboard. Fowler pops this one up. Drifting into foul ground. Mercer will make the grab. That's a good play. Really good play by Jordy. So a base hit awarded on that uh, ball that was thrown away. So that comes in the category of those other issues we were talking about. Here comes Jordy. That, that is back to home plate. You got a little sun. Don't know exactly where you are because you got. You got to stay locked in on the flight. Bios at first base, two men out, top of the ninth. Chris DeNorfia, first time at the plate. Runner goes, and this one smack foul out of play to the right. Back 
Pirates had the lead once in this game. It was after the third inning. They led four to three. Then in the fifth, Gates got kicked open by Chicago. Ground ball up the middle. And that is a base hit by DeNorfia. By is stopping at second. And that's a legitimate base hit there for DeNorfia. Austin Jackson up. He's 0 for 2. Grounded into a double play and struck out. Two on and two out now all of a sudden. It's to Jackson coming from Vance Worley. Worley ended up with a loss in last night's game. Gave up a run in the top of the 12th inning. Four and six. Vance went down to triple A and. Did all he could, including winning a playoff game for them. The Indianapolis Indians. As all players will tell you, that get to come back after being in the big leagues for a period of time. Very happy to be here. So, is that little one, in spite of the score? Into his guy uh, McCutcheon, not in the lineup today, but I think down the stretch here, we're going to see uh, perhaps just a guess, but perhaps more lineups with regular players. And uh, with Jung Ho Gung, who knows how long he'll be missing, if any time at all. We don't know. We do not know what uh, the result is of the injury to Jung Ho Gung, but at the same time. You got to get into what they call the push now. The final 15, 16 games. Clint's been through it with the Rockies in 2007. They had an incredible push. That team went to the World Series and were swept, and then the Red Sox beat him. Then he went to the World Series with Texas as a hitting coach. Line drive, Polanco will make the running catch. Nothing across. For the Cubs in the top of the ninth. Last wraps for the Pirates. They trail 9 6. Against the Dodgers. Our coverage from Dodger Stadium starts tomorrow night, 9 30, with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason on Route Sports. Left hander Jeff Locke, opposite right hander Zach Greinke. That'll be game one from LA tomorrow. 9 3. Pirates need three. Speaking of left handers, game. as you watch Andrew controlling the dugout, Travis Wood, you know, we use this phrase a lot. He's got to get this guy to stay in the game. 
I would predict that. Yeah. <laughs> Joe won't wait very long. Well, he's got somebody up. So Wood shakes off the first pitch, he accepts the second one, pitching to Josh Harrison. Strike call. Josh doubled in the seventh and scored. Fernando Rodney ready to go in the Cub pen if needed. Whoa. Watch out. That one pulled sharply out of play. Nothing in two. Travis Wood ahead of Josh Harrison. Strikes him out. Montero's got to complete the strikeout. One down. Three strikeouts for Travis Wood. I told you the Pirates have not lost a four game series this year. And on the verge, two outs away from doing so for the very first time. At a very inopportune time. And. Pirates also not lost three home games in a row since April 22nd through the 24th of 2014 against the Reds. Chris Stewart, 0 for 1, he grounded out to Addison Russell. Be a very inopportune series to lose to the Cubs. Split the doubleheader. Pirates won game one on Tuesday. John Lester pitched a complete game Tuesday night. Jake Arrieta had a strong game yesterday. Got a no decision. Pirates had opportunities. There was a controversial play at the plate that I still don't understand. Major League Baseball's explanation for it is something that no one's ever heard of before. Even people in uniform with the Pirates. Stewart down on strikes and the Bucks down to the last out. Very disappointing afternoon. As a whole, this will be a disappointing series. The Pirates have needed this one. Need them all now. I mean, it's, it goes without saying, but the home record is very good. You got to take care of business at home before going out west. Pirates have done a great job against the National League West this year. Yeah, they've got a challenge the next two nights. Cranky and Kershaw. Pirates are 21 and 5 against the West. Jeff Lott coming off a pretty good start. He will try to put together another one. Cole pitched Sunday in his home territory, Southern California. Going to be lots of friends and family there at Dodger Stadium on Sunday. To watch Garrett Cole mow down the Dodgers. Strike call. Bucks down to their final strike today. A lot of action, a lot of attention being paid for the Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals this weekend. They're three games set. That'll draw a lot of attention. Two balls, two strikes. Polanco, decent day at the plate. Home run and an RBI base hit. Solo shot in the third. Pirates are really getting to Kyle Hendricks, and then Joe Madden went to the hook early. And Travis Wood strikes out the side in the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Cubs take three of four from the Pirates. They're now two games behind the Pirates. For that first wild card spot. A huge ground gaining series for Chris Bryant and the rest of his Cub teammates. Yep. Pirates got off to a good start, as you said, winning the first game of the double header, but uh, it all slid away. And now a uh, tough trip coming up. They'll face the Cubs again at the end of it, the Dodgers, the beginning of it. And you never know about the Rockies, what they do in their own ballpark, uh, the offense that they present. So, uh, well, you can't do anything about this one. Get on the airplane and go out and uh, 
Pirates stun the Dodgers tomorrow night. Pirates quest for the division title getting a little tougher now as they're four and a half back while the Brewers and Cardinals will play later today. So the final score the Cubs nine and the Pirates six. Let's go to Rob King and Kent Sikovic. Tim and Steve.